So good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm, I heard mentioning the word disruption. Well, I think it's a, a disrupting presentation compared to what we've seen so far. Um, I want to leverage on my past experience to give you a little bit of for, for thought about what's happening in the travel industry and uh, uh, what we think uh, as Amadeus uh, will shape the future of travel. Of course, in order to give you this insight, I need to spend a little bit of moment to explain why, uh, what Amadeus is doing in order for me to build the credibility of the company to tell you such a story. So bear with me for a little bit of time uh, to explain you what Amadeus does uh, in a few words. So what Amadeus does is really he works uh, at uh, the intersection of technology and he provides technological solution to facilitate and to uh, make sure that all the key players in the travel industry, whether they are travel agency, corporation, uh, ferries, cruisers, airport, uh, um, ground handler, can succeed in, in their business. Uh, um, one of the part of uh, our success is explained by the fact that we are in uh, almost 200 countries. It's not only about a scale, it's about our proximity to the customer that put us in a, in a really uh, particular position to understand what's going on and preempt and try to understand the future. Uh, we can say that uh, we are really connecting the ecosystem of travel because basically our technical solution get together all the key players and enable them to do business together wherever they are in the world. So this is what we call the travel ecosystem. But it's also true that uh, there cannot be a travel ecosystem if uh, our uh, technological solution wouldn't be designed around the customer needs. Uh, even if we are behind the curtain and we are a B2B company, of course there is no innovation and no technology if uh, we don't know what's going on on the customer uh, standpoint. Uh, whether it's in inspiration mood, whether it's booking, it's purchasing, is in post-trip mood, where, uh, whether it's complaining about what happened, everything. All the life cycle of the customer is being taken care of uh, by the solution that Amadeus provides to the company that operates in the travel sector. Uh, as a company, we have uh, a purpose. Uh, our uh, solution really are meant to facilitate uh, the travel experience for millions of customers. Uh, sorry. Uh, millions of customers every day and uh, uh, if you think for a moment uh, on uh, the travel and everything that stays behind from you know simple searching booking buying a ticket but also um, managing flight information the out the airport the technology behind Everything requires seamless data, requires information. All these dots have to be connected, and this is exactly what Amadeus does. We are trying to uh, really facilitate the traveler journey end to end. As a company, we have a mission. Of course, uh, we are focused on the future because technology is, our, in, is in our DNA, and uh, we, are really, we really want to, to play a sort of leading role in driving the industry forward. Um, why we think we can do it? Well, we have a history. It's a 27-year-old history. Uh, there are a couple of uh, interesting insights that I want to tell you about our history. Of course, we started in the travel sector with a very simple idea. Amadeus was born because uh, Air France, Iberia, and uh, uh, Lufthansa wanted to create something very simple to increase their distribution and basically to sell more seats uh, uh, available in their plane. So they created this uh, initial technological platform to connect together all the availability and the seat of these three companies. But then our drive for innovation and technology focus helped us really, you know, uh, building and shaping the airline industry. It was uh, an easy move to get beyond the, um, the industry and move and diversify into the other complementary uh, vehicle of transportation like rail, uh, hotel, and everything related to travel. There are a couple of, uh, of points uh, that uh, uh, make the history of Amadeus interesting. The first one is that uh, uh, we created the e-commerce division in 1996, which is just one year later than when Expedia was created. So we can share the same kind of longevity in the uh, e-travel sector. And also, if you look at the business result in 2013, we have our platform uh, enabled the e-commerce traveler, um, sorry, companies to sell 
almost 30 billion euro of e-commerce, which put Amadeus in the second position worldwide, just behind Amazon, if you consider the, the western uh, part of Europe. Um, there are some other numbers to provide the scale, but uh, what is important that uh, uh, I can pass you as a message is that our history is really characterized by innovation and technology, which is uh, putting Amadeus in really at the center of uh, uh, this uh, kind of privileged observation for what concerns travel. In terms of our uh, product, we have tons and tons of product uh, because uh, in, in some cases we are trying to make difficulty in uh, what should be very simple. But what's important is that there is a core business, which is uh, the basic uh, distribution platform where everything related to uh, booking a flight ticket is a uh, concern to providing more sophisticated solution from e-commerce side to social um, to platform for booking whatever uh, product of travel. What makes the difference is that uh, they are sharing the same platform, technological platform, the same data center, and in the long term, this is a real benefit uh, for the travel provider and the travel, um, the travel agent. Uh, the fact that we have been able to focus always constantly on uh, technology innovation for growth is also resulting in a very strong, solid result. Uh, I'm not showing the result to say how good or how big we are, but there is a, a logic consequence behind being in a position where 42% of our profit uh, is, uh, um, is available. And it's available for doing two things, of course. We are a commercial company. We are quoted at the uh, Madrid Stock Exchange. So uh, generating profit for investors is one of the key things, but it's not the first one. What is uh, really driving our capability to keep on growing in the future is the fact that uh, this availability of money gives us the possibility to invest. And of course, uh, to invest in research and development. Uh, we have invested almost 3 billion euro in the last decade. Sorry, I'm struggling with technology. But also what is important is that uh, we are actively engaging into everything related to discussion about uh, travel with public or private company to make sure that we have a, a really competitive uh, uh, edge in the observation of what's going on. So this said, uh, um, let's think about the future. If we look at Amadeus, it's true that the future uh, and that looking at the travel per se, there is a still very strong potential for growth because uh, if we can, oh, mamma mia, sorry, it's going too fast. Okay, but looking at numbers, and if you look at uh, uh, where we can focus our diversification, it's true that uh, still uh, there is a very big open space uh, valued in uh, 10 billion dollars uh, to be occupied. But was, what is more important, and that brings me to talk to you about the future trend, is the fact that uh, this 10 billion can be judged um, a few or a lot, uh, but uh, these are uh, the market that, that has uh, uh, allowed one billion travelers to travel uh, in 2013. Uh, one billion is a huge number, but this number is not going to stop. Why we think this? Well, uh, having this kind of uh, privileged position in, in the intersection of travel put, us also, uh, put on us the responsibility to try to uh, identify which can be the future trend uh, for the travel, not only to uh, focus our effort, the technological and the developmental effort, but also to ensure that we can support our customer to understand and to drive the industry moving forward. So we have commissioned uh, recently, end of 2013, uh, um, an economic prediction to Oxford University, uh, Oxford Economic, which is one of the, like Garner, uh, one of the key leading company in providing macroeconomic forecast. Uh, and they try to highlight for us what will be the future trend uh, for the next decade, impacting on the travel, uh, the future of the travel. So the first one, well, in reality, the first is a good news. It seems like the travel sector is getting out from the crisis. As you know, uh, may, more than many other industry, travel is the one more dependent of economic crisis. Italy entered in the crisis later, at a later stage than in other economies, but it's fair to say that since 2008, uh, 
the, uh, the travel, uh, apart from the online, uh, really uh, has uh, uh, bounced back uh, from where it was prior to the crisis and uh, has not recovered yet. There are three physiological factors for which travel will grow. One is a physiological one, population is growing, and this is an impact. The second one is that the available income in the household, especially in the uh, Asiatic uh, economies, is increasing. So the disposable income for travel will increase. And the third one is related to the GDP growth. Now, it's a good news, uh, also because, as you can see, the forecast foresee an increase uh, in numbers, which is higher than the overall uh, gross domestic product increase. Uh, the challenge for the uh, operators in the travel sector will be to see what market to prioritize, what channel to use, uh, and how to help the travel suppliers to be better placed uh, to get this uh, um, new opportunity coming for a further growth. Looking also at what happened in the air travel, air travel is a key indicator in the travel of what's going on then in all the other products because historically flight is the entry point for travelers to get access to all the other travel product. And again, these are uh, IATA, is uh, the worldwide uh, agency for uh, um, passengers and air ticketing. He's uh, forecasting a very strong uh, double digit growth also of the uh, air passengers. As you can expect, uh, the predominance of this growth is not coming from European uh, market, but it's coming from the uh, strong uh, growth of the Asia Pacific. These are interesting numbers. Overall, it's a positive situation, as said, is not only in terms of uh, uh, investment, it's also in terms of head. So again, still growing at a single digit, 5% expected the growth of the national and international passengers. But if we look a little bit more at the difference between the different regions, again, Asia Pacific is leading the growth with 16%. And, of course, the average is reflecting a slowdown in, in um, improving of the, the domestic European travelers, but a really, really fast pace, especially in China. So, in reality, this is not a news uh, because uh, we all know that emerging markets are really already emerged in their travel. Uh, the importance of uh, this emerging market is not only related to uh, the numbers growing that, uh, you know, have per se some economic uh, uh, implication, but has a huge implication also in terms of technology. Consider for a second the fact that by 2023, we will have 220 million people in China traveling. What does it mean? Well, it means a lot because uh, Chinese travelers are different from the European one. Uh, they are certainly much more sophisticated. They are pioneering in the use of mobile and device and platform for sale and services. Uh, they are approaching now international sales, but they have different uh, uh, habit, uh, different travel habit, and there will be an impact certainly in the receptivity, especially in Europe and in US, which are the preferred outbound destination for this uh, for this uh, population. Europe will remain the, ma the majority of, uh, um, well, the biggest destination in terms of outbound, but if you look in, uh, in the next 10 years, it's true that Asia Pacific will account for 42% of the total uh, uh, outbound. There is another implication. Consider the role of the hub, in the international hub in the airport. How much will change from, uh, you know, normal way of using airport, how much will change in terms of airline company uh, to be a better place to serve these long haul passenger that will come into the old continent. But as I was explaining, there is also, this is a, an interesting example on how these emerging markets are really pioneering uh, and are using devices in a different way. These are three examples. Uh, one is related, I found uh, especially the, the one in the middle uh, between uh, quite fascinating in Japan in order to, to solve the issue of uh, finding a taxi during rush hour, they have uh, created a bidding system. So if you're willing to pay more extra, you can make the deal directly with the taxi driver and get uh, uh, the passage before the others, or you can get connected directly to the taxi closer to you and uh, um, in the same way facilitate your, uh, your travel experience. These are examples, but as you can imagine, this is a really 
impacting quite considerably in how the old economy will have to structure themselves to face uh, this, uh, this customer. Another big, big, uh, uh, this has been, uh, uh, by the industry, this is uh, the biggest uh, event uh, in, the, in the travel in the next decade, which is uh, the market share of the low-cost carriers. Low-cost carriers are a big reality in Europe. In some countries like, uh, Europe, like Spain or Italy, they already account for 50% of the total air passengers. Uh, Europe is expected to reach 200 million flight, not passenger flight, operated in 2023, but US and Asia Pacific are really running shortly against uh, with numbers uh, that are impressive. Are impressive also because that will change completely the way passengers will, uh, will use low cost compared to traditional airline. So we are uh, really looking and seeing a phenomenon of converging business strategy and models, uh, even if, uh, again, structural factor will, uh, will make sure that, uh, will, well, will, uh, will make happen that uh, at least for the next five years, they will uh, try to stay in their comfort zone uh, and leverage on the competitive advantage that at the moment are, which are for the low cost, uh, the focus on price, uh, and for the traditional carrier, the fact that uh, their structure allow for service and for long haul. But again, when we talk about 220 million uh, people coming from, Sudan, uh, from uh, South um, uh, East Asia, they have uh, an average income which is different from the one that we have. Uh, so they are looking for service uh, and price at the same time. So it's a huge opportunity for low cost, but low cost at the moment are not structured to service for long haul, because one of the key elements of the business model of low cost is the fact that they can rotate the fleet and therefore really reduce and optimize their running and operating cost. So uh, there is a challenge to them to see how fast and how far they can go to cover an exploited area of, uh, of the travel. And also, there is another challenge to low cost for their expansion, which is uh, what is going to happen with the rail. Rail is a, an old, still an old economy. Rail, I, I was yesterday in Vienna to discuss a European rail forum, where it's evident, at least in Europe, that rail has to speed up in their technological uh, improvement, if you consider uh, a little bit back in the past, uh, after um, one of the key innovations in, uh, in the travel market in the last uh, 10 years is not the mobile, is not e-commerce, has been the capability of, this, of the hotel, of the lodging, to create uh, physiologically a marketplace. For the first time, a marketplace was created not by the provider, but the inter uh, intermediaries. So, and if you consider these on flight and hotel, you can understand what are the benefits for having a marketplace. If you consider rail, they will have soon to move into creating a marketplace to be available as an offering for the customer that will prefer uh, rail opposite to air in the short haul. So it's a really evolving market where the sooner the, this operator will get in, uh, the better they will occupy a, a space which is in any case naturally changing. We always talk about leisure, but in reality, if you look at the total travel, total travel is made up by 60% leisure, leisure travel, but an amazing 40% of business travel. It's true that business travel has been the one most hit by the economical crisis because companies have reduced dramatically the spent on, uh, on travel. Well, again, why we think it will grow again? It will grow again because uh, you cannot uh, replace and substitute completely with smart ways of using technology like video conference. Because some culture, and again, uh, Southeast Asia, they tend to have uh, a productive meeting only if they are face to face. So there will be a limit to optimizing travel cost by using smart technology, but there will be a different ways of using economies of scale to book their travel. Also, technology did another important um, activity on this type of customer. Uh, it's very difficult, well, as an industry, we speak about business travel and leisure travel, but if you look at the customer by himself, it's the same person that is buying its business travel 
or his leisure travel. So this idea of becoming more and more travel agent on themselves has an, also a very big impact on how the corporation and the company are managing their travel expenses and their travel uh, buying uh, with the customer. Also, there is another interesting element that comes uh, with uh, uh, the business travel trend uh, and that comes uh, with the fact that uh, everything is so connected. Uh, it's, so, it's called the phenomenon of the three S, uh, safety, security, and sustainability. Safety is really, uh, and has to do a lot with data protection and sharing of information. Everything is online. So uh, companies tend to be more and more actively involved in making sure that there is a high and sophisticated uh, technology to protect data, and we just heard that it's not possible, which is a good news. Security, security has to do with personal security. Uh, travel is no more in the traditional destination, but is more and more toward destinations which were not in the repertoire before. So there are concerns about personal security, which company and travel company need to secure, and sustainability. We will see in a second that is one of the key trends for the next generation traveler, the capability to help the environment and the sustainability of the ecosystem meaning like the natural ecosystem when it comes to travel and the increase of numbers of flights. Then there are three other trends which we aggregated for the sake of um, simplicity. One is an extremely important trend and it's called, it's intraductable, so I'm very glad that we had to speak in English, is the concept of seamless travel. Basically is to travel using different modes and vehicles of transportation and, uh, but everything has to be organized through a single booking process or a ticket. It's a very difficult complex and there is a dichotomy between the demand and the offers because customers are already there and we will see in a second, but the industry is not. Because uh, to have a seamless travel, to deliver a seamless travel experience, you need two things, technology and infrastructure. Infrastructure provides you the modes of transportation and technology connect the different modalities. Unfortunately, this requires a collaborative approach toward the industry, and this is uh, not really in line with what the, uh, each single uh, travel uh, operators and travel player is really focusing on. But it's something that uh, more and more we will have to be organized and do as a travel provider, because this is what the customer demand. There are a couple of examples to make this uh, a little bit more concrete to you. One is the Schiphol Airport in uh, Amsterdam. There is, a, uh, in the international river, there is a high-speed train directly connected to the terminal that connects uh, immediately Amsterdam to Paris and to Brussels. This is a concept of uh, seamless travel. And the, big, the best one is Walt Disney World with My Magic. Walt Disney has created for their park uh, a virtual bracelet where uh, you can uh, get connected and book uh, just through a click. Uh, all the attraction, all the stays, all the vehicles of transportation. But they could do it because they are managing a full ecosystem. But certainly it's something that the customer will require an answer from the travel player. Um, I'm sure you are all aware of Skyscanner, Kayak, Trivago. Well, these guys have emerged as a really big phenomenon only recently, I would say three years ago. They were, they were existing before, but they were able really to create disruption on the online travel market in Europe and especially in Italy only recently for their uh, marketing and, and business, uh, and business uh, way and, and business model. There is a, a consolidation of the meta. As at the beginning, the Alta were created for the need of the global distribution system to expand their business. Now the Alta are acquiring all these meta consolidators to make sure that they can maximize the revenue. But these meta intermediaries not only are uh, um, changing the way the uh, online travel agency have to spend their money, they have changed completely the way the customer are buying the travel product. Uh, so there are two phenomena that are really heavily impacting on the marketing investment in the travel sector. One is where the traffic goes. They don't go any longer directly, neither to Google nor to the site of the different uh, uh, travel provider. They go through the meta. And this has an, uh, uh, another consequence that they buy travel product separate. 
So this is changing also the way, not only the purchase habit, but also the offer and the content that the company has to provide. Then, of course, there is an increase in popularity of collaborative economy, Airbnb, Homeway, blah, blah, car. Everything that has to relate to the way customers interact with themselves to save money. And then, in the travel, we used to talk about mobile. It's true, mobile is growing. Mobile will reach a consistent amount of transaction in the next decade for online transaction, but it's also true that one thing is the distribution of technology. The other thing is the full utilization of technology. And unless a travel provider will, will be able to provide personalized and customized travel application, it will be very difficult to really uh, exponentially expand the use of mobile apart from a tactical use. And on top of this, uh, the mobile per se has uh, some implicit characteristic that makes uh, some product in travel more appealing and more sellable through mobile through the other. But it's true that we have to cope with the fact that mobile requires a different approach uh, because mobile implies a different content and a different way of uh, increasing visibility because the space is reduced. And uh, um, this is an ongoing theme among uh, travel operators, not only online travel agencies, but also the metas uh, that are trying to understand how to structure their content and their communication in a space which is much more reduced. This is what the data and what the uh, observation uh, is telling us about the future. But as Amadeus, because we have competence center and we spend a lot of time discussing with travelers and with, with customer and with our customer, I, we have a point of view on uh, uh, what is in the mind of the customer. And we think what will happen is uh, that uh, we are facing a really a next generation traveler which is not a next generation only because they are the digital native moving into travel, not at all. It's, uh, it's more than that. It's about how these travelers relate themselves with technology. So we believe uh, there are three major words that characterize the next generation traveler. The first one is, uh, and the way they see the future. They see a future which is personalized. What does it mean? Well, it means that uh, these, uh, uh, these customers really have access to terabytes of information in real time. So they really want to make sure that uh, uh, they have experience that are more and more unique to themselves, whether it's business or leisure. They want uh, to integrate their experience offline and online. And this is something that is really changing the way also the traditional travel market approach, uh, the way they're offering the content and the relationship of the to the travelers. They want really to create their own uh, travel packages. In that sense, when we talk about uh, travel agents on themselves, uh, which is posing a big challenges on the way that traditional travel agents operate in the market. It's a connected future. It's not only connected because uh, customers are connected 24 seven, it's connected because uh, the new way of uh, using the social technology to relate to the other has been uh, start to be utilized also in the way they relate to the brand. They are really expecting collaboration between brand and between company and themselves. But on the other side, they want company to make sure that they stay away when they are not available to discuss with them. So this is also uh, changing again the way that uh, the travel company are using the social media. And I think another dichotomy, if we look at the big company like Expedia, as me not a dream, they moved into the social very, very late, and still now they don't really understand how to use them to relate in a relevant way to the customer. So this is requiring not only a change of mentality on how they, they use their marketing investment, but also on how they speak to the customer. And, uh, the fact that they are connected has had a huge impact on the passion that this customer has. I was at the conference, uh, as you know, a couple of years ago where I was uh, in my previous job, and uh, I found fascinating this uh, uh, neologism, the culture of nowism. What does it mean? It means that the customer has lost their passion. These are real data of research conducted in UK, well, Brits, uh, and it's funny because if you consider, you know, the stereotype on British, which are the more passionate of all, uh, well, this is not the case any longer. You can imagine what is happening in the other countries. Uh, 
So the growing culture of Noism, what does it mean? Uh, that uh, we don't want, want to wait for answers. There was a study that uh, revealed that uh, for each second gained in a booking process for an Alta, an average of 250,000 pounds per year are earned by the company. So imagine also the economical impact that has the fact that you can respond to the customer need in a very rapid way. And this is again a challenge because rapidity doesn't always fit with the deepness of content that the customer are looking for. But it's quite fascinating that you know 50% abandon a page if it doesn't load in uh, three seconds and the majority of them will not come back again. And the last, uh, the last element of the future is the sustainability. Uh, this is, uh, uh, this is a, a worrying trend and it's a trend that has been taken very seriously, certainly by the airline sector, certainly uh, by everyone that is really making sure that uh, uh, is working on technology for this. Uh, uh, because uh, this is something that uh, companies cannot control any longer. There is an overwhelming, an, over, an, an amazingly increasing uh, uh, responsibility and understanding of the customer that want more and more to be involved and in understanding and making sure that the ecosystem is maintained and they are demanding to the company to help them in that way. So, as you see, uh, there are some positive, to sum up, there are some positive signals. It's a market that is evolving. It's a market where technology is really what drives and what makes the difference. It's a market where even the technology that is at the edge uh, is really trying hard to follow the fast pace of the change in behavior and in the customer mind. But it's a future that I think we cannot escape any longer. So uh, the message is for everyone related uh, to the travel sector to make sure that uh, they can really listen to their customer and, uh, and try as much as they can to follow their trend. As I said, as Amadeus, uh, we are really involved and uh, we want to really to build our vision on the future, but uh, of course we are uh, as well conscious about the fact that we cannot do it without listening and do it with the customer. And that's all. I hope you, uh, you enjoyed and uh, there has been some interesting insight in that uh, special, particular aspect of uh, the future for the travel. Thank you.